Aloha, and welcome to Waikiki, Hawaii. I'm Paul Comfort, and on this episode of Transit Unplugged TV, we're gonna take you up close and personal to an amazing first in the nation elevated rail system that's been decades in the making, their heart system. We'll also go behind the scenes of their bus and paratransit system, and we'll ride the number eight bus on our How Do I Get There segment, taking you with John Nucci to where true Hawaiians get their real comfort food at Zippy's. We'll go over all the menu of delectable delights right here in Honolulu. And then we're gonna show you at a sunset like you can only get in Waikiki over drinks with Roger Morton, the transportation director for Honolulu. All that on this amazing episode of Transit Unplugged TV from America's paradise, Hawaii. But first, I'm gonna take a ride, ride the waves. Standing here today in the shadow of Pearl Harbor, we're at the Hart facilities, the rail main facility where the operations and control center is and where the garage is. We'll be touring this today. What a great view. We're in Honolulu, Hawaii, on the nation's first autonomous train. No drivers are gonna be on this train and everything is monitored. There's cameras everywhere. Even if you pick up a fire extinguisher, it sends a signal to the operations control center. Let them know somebody has touched something and picked something up. This thing is in testing right now. It's all elevated. It's gonna serve the island of Hawaii in a way that's never been served before. Being built by Hart, this is a phenomenal system that we're taking a tour of in Honolulu. Lori, we're here in the shop at your Honolulu Area Rapid Transit System where you're building this phenomenal train system. Tell us a little bit about it. Oh, it's very impressive. So actually, we're ready to start um, revenue service, hopefully by, by April, May time frame. But um, right now, it's a 18.75 mile system, but we're ready to turn over the first segment, which is about 10 miles. So Lori, tell us about um, what's gonna happen once this thing gets going. Who's it gonna serve? How often sure. is it running, those kind of things? Sure, so it's going from the west side of the island to downtown Honolulu. And the first segment is going to go from East Kapolei to uh, Aloha Stadium. And that should open up within the next few months. And then the next segment is going to go from Aloha Stadium to Middle Street within the next two years after that. And then the last segment is going to go to Kaka'ako, a little bit past downtown. And that'll be open in about 2030, 2031. Lori, a long-term, big, multi-billion dollar project like this doesn't happen without a lot of partnerships, a lot of help from the federal, state, local government, all the departments. You came from the city. Yes. Uh, you worked there many years. Tell us about some of these partnerships that oh. it took to get this right now on the cusp of happening. Oh, yes, absolutely. In order to turn our reputation around, we could not be where we are today without the, pre pre the uh, relationships that we've had. Um, I did have prior relationships before coming over from the city departments to Hart, and it is pivotal. We have to have the support of the city administration, the mayor, the city departments, um, the state legislators, FTA, the federal um, delegation. Without the support of all the stakeholders, we would not be successful. I mean, challenges always come up, whether it's technical, political, and we cannot overcome them without the support of all of our stakeholders. So it is instrumental in the success of this project. Michael, you and I worked together in Baltimore at MTA. Yeah. You were the training manager there for 30 years. What are you doing here in Hawaii? Oh man, I had such a great opportunity to come here to be part of the first automated rail system. So here I'm the training and competency manager. So my job is to create all the curriculums, get all the training coordinated, because we're hiring local talent who have zero experience with rail transit. So we had to take them from that to knowing how to run the trains and the systems um, without any errors or any problems, or basically work independently, become competent in their jobs. That's amazing. Um, this is fully automated, so yeah. you're training, who are you training, the mechanics and those kind of things? Yeah, we're training OCC staff, station staff. We do have some train operators in case things don't go well. Um, and of course, all the maintenance, you know, PSG techs, ATC wayside techs, traction power, maintenance of way, rolling stock, so all of that. We took a tour of the nerve center of the rail system called the Operations Control Center, where all the cameras are monitored and the overall rail system is controlled. While in Hawaii, 
I attended the American Public Transportation Association's Business Members Conference. All right, John, we're here in Waikiki. We just finished an APTA reception. We're both a little hungry. Where should we go eat? We're going to go to one of my favorite places. It's got all of our island food, all of our island favorites under one roof. What's that called? Zippies. Zippies. And I got one more question. How do I get there? We're going to take the best way there. We're going to take the bus. We're going to go on Route 8 to the Ala Moana Center and to the Makiki neighborhood. Let's go. As an island native, John Nucci has a special perspective on the history of public transportation in Hawaii. So we're now on Route 8, headed to dinner. Um, tell me something about the bus and about the bus system. So our bus system here is very old. Its history goes all the way back over 100 years to when we had a monarchy with kings and queens in the Iolani Palace downtown. Um, they were progressive monarchs. They actually electrified their palace before the White House had lights, electric wow. lights. And so they saw the need for mobility in our city and they started our bus system. Well, what was the precursor to our bus system, which was uh, horse and mule driven conveyances on rails. So we had a streetcar system just like many other American cities. And um, that gave way to actually a trolley bus system that became our diesel and uh, now electric bus system again. So it's been a full circle. Next, we tried out some real island comfort food, amazing flavors and service at Zippy's. All right, so what's this? This is a Zipmin. So it's a noodle soup, just okay. like ramen is. But if you notice how clear the soup is, yes. it's usually made with like a chicken or a shrimp. It's a very light taste, whereas ramen tends to be kind of heavy, right? Okay. So this chili, Zippy's is famous for this chili. It's again, it's this nostalgic taste that we all have. Everybody has a favorite chili joint, right? Yeah. So this, this is what you would call a typical Hawaiian plate lunch. So this is one of the newer menu items at Zippy's. I think this came on the scene later, but it is again, it's, it's that Asian influence all coming together under one roof here. This is a Korean fried chicken, so it's a very crispy, boneless chicken with a sweet Korean influence sauce on it. Okay, now this is one of my favorites, the Zip Pack. And this Zip Pack is basically quintessentially a Hawaii mix of a Japanese bento box. Uh, we have a piece of fried fish here. You recognize that? Uh, yeah, spam. Spam. And a piece of Japanese grilled teriyaki beef right there. Again, on a bed of rice. And you see this, this right here? It's called furikake. It's a seasoned Japanese seaweed with sesame seeds and salt and sprinkled all over the rice. It gives the rice a nice little flavor. It takes away some of that blandness with some saltiness. And this is a pickled uh, daikon uh, turnip here. It's just yellow for decoration. We got a, a bunch of good desserts here. Now, this is a chocolate dobash cake. It's a really light chocolate frosting. It looks really heavy, but this is a very light sponge cake with another chocolate center right here. This one over here is one of my favorite. Now, if you hear Chantilly, you usually think of like a, some kind of cream. This is a real butter-based Chantilly cake. So it's almost like, I don't want to like make it sound like something it's not, but it's like a German chocolate cake without nuts. But the Chantilly frosting is so rich on this thing. It's awesome. Um, this is a nod to our, our Hawaiian culture and our Hawaiian food right here. This white frosting here is also coconut, but it's a coconut cream, and it's named after a Hawaiian dessert called haupia. This is called, in, in the vein of it being called Napoleon's, this is called a napple, uh, apple turnover. The next day, back at the APTA conference, I spoke with India Birdsong, CEO of Cleveland's Transit System, and Jeff Nelson, immediate past president of APTA, about transit on the island. India, we're here in uh, Honolulu for the APTA conference, mm -hmm. and you and I were on a rail tour yesterday, yeah. which I thought was fascinating. They've got a brand new rail system here. You've already got a rail system. We do. What do you think that's going to bring to a city like Honolulu? Oh, connectivity. It's amazing. When you think about the mobility options that are available through rail, I mean, it puts you into a whole different bracket of mobility. Um, so I'm really excited for Lori, uh, new CEO here in, uh, in Honolulu, and just being able to think about what Hart can do in the autonomy side. So the autonomous vehicle uh, sort of uh, game of the industry is brand new. And so it's nice to be able to see that it can happen. Uh, it can happen safely and it can happen on time. So I really kind of uh, nerded out, so to speak, and asked a million questions yesterday and love to be able to see the, the rail consist, um, just the maintenance side of it and really the connectivity to the local colleges was kind of a win for me. Jeff, we're here in Honolulu at the APTA conference and uh, you've really helped in your role as chair of APTA over the last couple years, helped us as an industry get through some of the toughest times that anybody can remember. Now that we're coming out on the other side, we're here in this beautiful place of Honolulu, 
they're really helping their cities recover. Tell us about the role of public transportation in cities like Honolulu and other cities in helping us recover from the pandemic and really bring mobility to all. Like public transit's role in a community is really all about equity. And I uh, really see this as a great opportunity either in Honolulu or in Moline, Illinois. It's really connecting our communities. And uh, what I see happening here in Honolulu is incredible. You know, the, the fixed route bus is uh, the bread and butter of the system, but their new rail is going to be incredible. As you look at the community, the neighborhoods it's going to touch upon, I think it's something that's long overdue. And in, in a unique footprint, uh, they have a lot of density that I think uh, transit's just going to be a huge value. Next, we visited the Oahu Transit Services main bus garage facility to see behind the scenes of what it takes to run this transit system and speak with some of its leaders. So tell us about the system itself, Oahu yes. Transit Services. So we operate both the bus and the paratransit services on behalf of the city and county of Honolulu. We're a government instrumentality, um, so we're a little bit of a hybrid of a not-for-profit as well as a government agency. Um, so on a daily basis, you know, we run about 108 routes for the bus. Um, on the handy van side, we provide about maybe 3,000 trips, paratransit trips. So that's our day in and day out. So Jenny, what's the future hold for OTS? Um, there's quite a bit here. Um, our main purpose is to make sure that we provide the service for the public, um, be it pu bus or paratransit. Um, a couple of big changes that are coming up for, my, for us are, um, is electric buses, of course. Uh, we received 17 electric buses late last year, and um, we've been operating them successfully, so which is great. Um, we are looking at moving that over to our entire fleet of about 500 buses. So that is a very big endeavor. Um, another thing that's um, very much more immediate is just bus rail integration. So supporting the rail multimodal system, making sure that we're able to feed the rail timely um, and provide the service that our customers need. That's great. The agency itself, you mentioned earlier, is a kind of a quasi-agency. So uh, are you under the city-county government of Oahu? That's correct. The city and county, you know, they provide the policy. Um, they determine, final, finalize what the routes are, and we provide whatever data, information that they need, and just our experience from our operators, our mechanics, and so forth. So we provide that support to them. So we're in the Handy Van Operations Center. Yes. Tell us about a little about the service. We're here actually in the scheduling department right here, right? Yep, we're in the scheduling department, and these guys here, they schedule about 3,000 trips during the weekdays. Uh, on the weekends, it's about half, uh, maybe 1,500 on Sundays and 1,800 on Saturdays. Sean, tell us where we're at. We're at the Kalihi Transit Center. Uh, this Kalihi Transit Center here uh, serves as one of the major transfer points for not only the buses coming from the windward side of the island, but the leeward side and the Honolulu area. That's great. And it's right here at your main operations facility. That's correct. Our main operations center here is on Middle Street. Uh, we do have 986 operators that come out of here. We have 480 bus fleet. Uh, we do have two uh, facilities here on the island. This is the Kalihi facility, and we do have a Pearl City facility. And uh, I noticed behind your shoulder there, the, the new heart rail system's coming through. Yes, that is coming through. This right here will be the 15 mile portion of the rails. Uh, this is actually the end of the line for now until they finish completing the last five miles of the rail section. The bus maintenance garage is an important part of every transit system's operations. Oahu Transit Services is also starting to switch over from diesel to electric buses. And Adam, the head of bus maintenance, shows us how they're fueled. So what do we got here, Adam? We have one of our 25 dispensers. It's very easy to utilize. All we do is unplug it from the machine here. Undo the cord. Open up the door, take out the ports. Plug it in. Yeah, plug okay. it in, and it's that simple. And this is a Gillick bus. Uh, about how long does it take to charge a bus like this? Um, from zero, we're looking at anywhere from three to four hours, but it's rare that we get that low. So we're only looking at about an hour and a half to two hours normally we charge the bus at a time. Oahu has amazing beaches, and there I talk with Honolulu's head of rapid transit a little more about how their rail system was, or actually was not, developed. So Patrick, tell us something about the, the, the heart rail system that we don't know. Yeah, I would say one thing that people are probably not aware of is that it's not a P3. Really? Yeah. That's interesting because I think their perception is that it was a public-private partnership. 
Yeah, no, absolutely not. There, w there was a desire to enter into a P3 to complete the project, but ultimately after going through the procurement process, it was determined that entering into the P3 would not achieve the original goals set out by the procurement. So um, we decided to go another route. Over drinks at sunset, I spoke with my friend, Honolulu's Director of Transportation Services, Roger Morton, about his long career helping develop their amazing public transportation system. This place is awesome, Roger. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm so happy that you folks were able to come here uh, with BMBG to get to Honolulu, Honolulu. Speaking about awesome things, so you've been here in uh, Honolulu working for many years. I was able to visit, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, what is going to be your legacy, uh, the rail system, the mm -hmm. heart rail system, and Oahu Transit Services while we were here. Tell us some about your career and what you've been doing all these years here. Well, you know, some people um, say I've been here for 50 years, and that's not true. I've only been here for 49. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I started my career uh, when I, I got out of college. I, I was living in, I went to high school here. I was born in Canada, but I came here when I was in high school with my parents. Uh, and when I got out of college, you know, I was looking for something to do. I, I drive in a cab in my, my spare time. Uh, I saw this job. And at the time, there was this thing called the Arab oil embargo. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, and so we, you know, I thought, hey, mass transit is a promising career. Uh, and I've never looked back. That's something. And uh, so tell us about what you've done. I mean, you've built an amazing transit system for this whole island of a million people. Well, I started my career in the city transportation department. And I only stayed for two years uh, because I went back. I got my graduate degree and came back here. I worked as a consultant for a few years. Uh, and one of the jobs, and I still had this love for transit. So one of the jobs as a consultant, I was working in transit. Uh, and I was putting in one of the first computer systems into uh, the old bus company here. Always been a good one. And I kind of uh, insinuated myself in there with the general manager. And we became the odd couple. Uh, this second generation Portuguese guy from uh, Madeira, Spain myself, uh, uh, and I, you know, I was a great uh, mentor to me because he kind of, he took me everywhere with him, so I got to meet the mayors, I got to meet the union bosses. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I just did all of that, and, and you know, and, and, I, and I just gained this love for transit, and it's been, there, it's been with me for my entire career. Well, congratulations to you. I know this has been kind of underway for 20 years or more, maybe 30 years. Uh, maybe 40. Maybe 40, yeah, yeah. since you uh, got here, yeah. right? Well, and, pretty uh, much when I entered this uh, career, yeah. uh, that was Honolulu's first attempt at a rail system. Uh, this is our third, so. Wow, uh, and you're finally getting it done this year. You're gonna get it 2023. done 2023. Right. Roger, this restaurant's phenomenal. It's right on the water, and uh, it's a big event here every evening, a little after six for sunset, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, this is really a green flash type restaurant. This is where you can see the sun go down, bubble up down into the Pacific Ocean. You can almost see the ocean bubble when the sun goes down. Wow. And if you watch, if you keep watching, uh, you know, you get the green, the legendary green flash. Now, I'm not sure if that's your eyeballs burning out by watching, <laughs> uh, but it is uh, something I've done multiple times, and it's a really a fantastic view. Here in beautiful Waikiki on Oahu, Hawaii, we've taken an in-depth look at the culture of this beautiful island. We've shown you some of the food, some of the fantastic local cuisine. We've taken a look at the bus network and the transit network and seen a real commitment, a passion, with a deep understanding of the end customer needs. And so exciting to see what they're doing with rail. Going to unleash on the world, America's first fully autonomous train with no drivers. They are committed to making it happen after kind of years of delays. Now they're back on track and getting that thing running this year. So excited to bring you all that Hawaii and Oahu have to offer on Transit Unplugged TV.